Democrats. I stand before you today. I stand before you today as a proud member of the Congressional Black Caucus and former Speaker of the California State Assembly. Forty-seven years ago, in the face of opposition from those who said states should have the right to discriminate, America passed the Voting Rights Act of 1965. People of all races, religions, and backgrounds joined together and fought for that law because every one of us deserves a fair shake and a fair chance at achieving our version of the American dream. The right to vote gives us the power to take our future into our own hands. We must use that power today so that we do not lose it tomorrow. Today, one of the darkest shadows of the past century is creeping into this one. One of our most basic rights, the right to vote, a right that we fought for and won is under attack. Throughout the Union, governors and legislators have proposed or passed laws to make it more difficult for individuals to cast their ballots. We must build and be part of a nation where justice isn't just a catchphrase, but embodies the equality and fairness that our nation's founders envisioned. More than 41 years ago, when the Congressional Black Caucus was founded, that was our charge, and it still is. A vote and a voice in choosing our leaders, passing our laws, and setting the course for our nation. And for the future we seek, a generation of greater opportunity for all of us, we stand with President Obama in setting that path that moves us forward. <clears throat> Friends, let me take just one moment to say I am proud to live in the USA, USA. USA, 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 USA. I am proud, proud to live in this great country. But friends, I must tell you, America, it is up to us right now. It is up to us to make the decision on the type of country we will have. Either we will move forward towards securing economic future to be built to last with a strong middle class, or we will go back to a place where America's promise is only fulfilled for a select few. America, this we will not do. In the 60s, we marched because it was the right thing for our country, and it made us stronger, fortified by our faith and endowed by our Creator. We helped our country to overcome obstacles once thought insurmountable. In our nation's laws, they were thought to be insurmountable. In our hearts, we thought they were insurmountable. And once again, it's our time to uphold justice. It's our time to protect the rights that we have won. And it's our time to stand up for the country we love, the United States of America. Our faith tells us we have a moral obligation to better our communities, to accept responsibility, and to care for each other. But these values are not just unique to believers. They are American values. And this is the American way. America, it is up to us. It's up to us to wake up. It's up to us to sit up. It's up to us to stand up. It's up to us to get up. It's up to us to show up at the polls and re-elect the Honorable Barack Obama 
President of the United States of America, USA, USA, USA. God bless you. America. I'm a strong believer that how we treat each other matters. As public servants, it's our job to work in the spirit of comity to move this nation forward. But we also need all of you working with us to assure America's strong future. Tonight, I cannot speak to you without acknowledging that the bickering and brinksmanship we see too often in our politics is advantaging no political party. It weakens our nation. We can be fervent in our disagreements without being factitious with our beliefs. We can be tough without being toxic. To my colleagues in Congress, we will never be better off without being better. Congress is unable to do the work of the American people because too many politicians believe that compromise means capitulation. Th th this has got to change because just as bees cannot sting and make honey at the same time, members of Congress cannot simultaneously make passionate enemies and expect political progress. In my fifth congressional district of Missouri, Republicans and Democrats tell me that they would like to look at their political leaders and see more warm hearts and fewer hot heads, more facts and fewer falsehoods. Many of us want the same thing. Now, I greatly respect my Republican colleagues and their ideas, but make no mistake, I am proud to be a Democrat. I am proud to be a member of this great party. And we have, in many instances, been hit. You know, they are a liberal, they are progressive, Look, if being liberal and progressive means that I care for children and whether they go hungry, call me liberal, call me, call me Democrat. If being a Democrat means that I'm concerned about our seniors in the sunset of life, call me Democrat, call me liberal. After all, we are the ones who protected Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid, who fought for fair wages, and who ended Don't Ask, Don't Tell. We are Democrats! And don't you ever forget it! We are the party that is deeply committed to diversity. We consider every individual a valuable asset to our democracy. This is a great nation. We may be a nation of Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, but first and foremost, we are all human beings and Americans. There is something essential in the human spirit that always searches for hope. We are driven by hope. President Barack Obama has been lampooned for speaking of hope, hope for a better America. I want to encourage our president and all of us 
to continue to hope for an America that remembers, recognizes, and fervently protects its greatness. Yes, Mr. President, hope on. Continue to hope, Mr. President. No matter what, Mr. President, you keep on hoping. When everything is gone, you continue to hope. As long as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sits on the throne of grace, Mr. President, hope on, hope on, hope on. We are people of hope. Mr. President, hope on, hope on. When all else is gone, hope on. Mr. President, Mr. President, we want you to speak of hope to the American people because it is impossible for hope to over overdraw its account in God's bank. The tough days our nation faced may have caused us great pain, but they must not and will not cause us to lose our hope. Hope fills the holes of my frustration in my heart. Hope inspires me to believe that any day now, we will catch up to the ideals put forth by our nation's founding fathers. Hope is the motivation that empowers the unemployed, enabling them to get out of bed every single morning with unbounded enthusiasm as they look for work. It is our hope and faith that moves us to action. It is our hope and faith that reminds us to pray and also affirms that we must move our feet. It is our hope that tells us our latter days will be better than our former. It is our hope that instructs us to march on. And march on, and march on means marching through our communities to make sure everyone is registered and ready to vote. It means, it means on election day, November 6, 2012, we will stand in long lines together just as we did four years ago. This time, this time, it is to re-elect Barack Obama as president of these United States. Now, before I sit down, let me erase some confusion. Let me tell you something. There are people who poke fun at us Democrats. They say we go too far with this inclusion stuff. They say that we have a caucus for tall people and a caucus for short people and a caucus for people who don't fit into any other caucus. But let me just tell you, God did not burden the United States with the diversity of backgrounds, ideals, and religions. He blessed America with them. And as such, we, the United States of America, is best able to demonstrate to the rest of the world what God intended when he created us. And we, in our diversity and our differences, are all in this together. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. I'm not just talking about black people. When I say we, I'm not just talking about people of color. When I say we, I'm not just talking about Democrats. When I say we, I'm not talking about anything except all of America. I'm talking about Americans who can barely make ends meet, Americans who employ thousands and create jobs, Americans who are in K through 12, college, grad school, and professional school, Americans of all walks of life, 
We means us, proud Americans. And together, we must move the United States of America forward. There is more power, more power in unity than division. Let's do more than just say the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us live it. Let us. Let us embody one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And that means every one of us. Together, together, we must build a country where we live up to our nation's motto, E Pluribus Unum. Out of many, one. Yes, yes, we are one. We are one. We may be black, brown, yellow. It does not matter. We are one. We may be poor, we may be rich, but we are one. We may be up or we may be down, but we are one. We may be up, we may be down. We are one. Keep hope. Keep hope.